Hello everyone, thank you for handling our tech difficulties. I'm going to try again and see if we can get George in here from OT Tips and Beyond. I'm just going to get started here because this is going to, of course, be how Monday is. First of all, give me a shout out if you can hear me. If I'm not muted, that's really exciting. Um, secondly, let's, I see you. I have ex supposedly accepted OT Tips and Beyond. Yay, George! Hey. Thank you for your patience, my sweet Not friend. Problem, I'm no. so thankful that you are <laughs> you're like hanging around, but you Not know. a problem. Okay. Yes. We did it. Hello. Perfect. How are you besides I am well. Thank the you. The panicked breathing on my end. <laughs> it's all good. You gotta learn Excellent. to be flexible. Well, got it. I know. It's that's what we gotta do, especially when we're educators. We know stuff doesn't always go right the first time or the second mm. or the third. Right. Well, welcome. I hope you had a great day. I know you just finished your work day, um, mm -hmm. so you're still in your classroom. But can you give everyone just a little um, insight into who you are, George, and what you do? Okay, yes. So my name is George Ochoa. I am a school-based pediatric occupational therapy. And so I work with kids um, who are in special education ages 3 through 21. So I basically, I have been um, an OT for um, 20 years now. And um, I'm also a group drumming facilitator. Nice. Yes. So that that's very exciting, and that's part of the reason why I started following you. I um, I'm a percussionist myself, but I also think music in the art room and music in around and in around us can help just kind of like tweak up that that um, creativity a little bit with our students. So I'm really excited to chat with you today. And um, again, like I mentioned before in my tech difficulty version, um, a big reason why we do these Instagram lives is to help bridge the art education world with um, creatives, artists, other art teachers, other educators of not art persuasion. So it's kind of fun to, to see how we really do connect and how we can collaborate and inspire each other um, in so many ways. So George, I'm super psyched to chat with you about how you use music in your room, but also just how you see the OT side of art education kind of partnering together well and why we should, as art educators, really seek out our our um, specialists or as our school calls it, we call them the VIPs. So all of the mm -hmm. like, non-classroom teachers, right? They have right. A, a, a very important role that right. is uh, maybe not as, as structured as a day-to-day -day classroom teacher, but um, just as important. So can we just talk a little bit about your background with music? Okay. Um, how did your love of music start? Um, and, well, and what do you do with it today? Right. So I, my earliest me memory is of my grandfather giving me two, um, two sticks, which are ca called cl claves. Mm -hmm. And so I remember when I was younger, he, he given me those and I started to play. So I really started to um, play more on percussion um, in that sense. And then um, in middle school, I would say that um, it, I started putting um, books on my bed and pretending like they were drums. So then I would just start playing on top of the books and then um, pretending like I was playing a drum set or just some drums. And then in high school, I joined the marching band. Nice. In high school, so. What did I you did, play in marching band? Because all of my, my band friends out there are gonna need to know. I played the heavy bass drum. Oh, so at the time, yeah, the I know. One. I was a snare drummer, yeah. so oh, respect. Man. I, I know, I know, but bass drum is for gospel. They're a hard piece of band. Yeah, and that that hot sun going to to practice. So, um, <laughs> but I actually started playing drum set at what I considered to be a late age. I started playing it at the age of nineteen, which was back in nineteen eighty nine. That's actually okay. how I started drum drum set. So, um, so. If we're going to f fast forward now, many years. Um, so I became, a, I started working in a school setting in, in 2001. And it wasn't until around, maybe around, around 2007 is when I actually found the world of hand drumming and group dr drumming and drumming with kids. Um, I found that by accident, so, so to speak, on the internet because I was looking up drumming, but n more of drum set playing. Mm -hmm. So I actually found drumming and I saw 
this whole new world of hand drumming and drum circles come up where people who did not have previous musical experience, how they could get together, how they could play, play just to connect, just to de-stress, just to let go. And then the more and more I looked into it, the more I saw that, hey, you know, kids can get involved in this. And so um, I was, at the time I was thinking, you know, some, this is something that I really, really think is very cool. So there's a program that I found at the time that's called the Rhythmic Arts Project, mm -hmm. okay? And I was started actually by a drummer that was in an accident and he helped to develop this pro this program, which really, really helped me out a lot because um, it is uh, just for those that have spe special needs. So I went to my special ed director at the time. So it was around 2007, around there. And I asked her if she would buy me the curriculum, nice. which included, you know, the DVD, the book, as well as 10, um, 10 drums. And she was very supportive. She said, yes. So then I started, um, I started to go around to the different special ed um, self-contained cl classrooms. And I started playing drums with the kids there. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I kind of gained the experience of playing with kids and then playing with those that, that have special needs. And then um, in 2008 is when I started T Tambo Rhythms as a uh, side part-time business. Nice. So, yeah, so full-time, full, full -time, I'm school-based OT um, slash, you know, and, and I do do some drumming at work, but most of the dr drumming does occur outside of work. Um, with people of all ages, um, with and without special needs. Awesome. Thank you yeah. for that huge background. I know sometimes um, things can kind of happen by accident, like realizing that it's something you can kind of infuse into your classroom mm -hmm. and how special that can be. And sometimes when we're not looking for it, that's when we find what might be the most beneficial um, or, or something that our kids connect to the most. Now, mm -hmm. I'm in my head as the art teacher, I'm listening to you talk, and mm -hmm. I know I personally have a connection to music, but not everyone necessarily does. And it might be mm -hmm. a little intimidating to think, how can I bring instruments or music or, or how can I make those ties a little bit into my classroom if I don't have any background in it? But mm -hmm. what I'm also hearing is art teachers hear students and other adults say, I'm not an artist. But that is irksome because we know that all of our, all people that create are artists. Mm -hmm. So similarly, musicians, um, you don't need to be a professional paid musician in order right. to hit a drum or shake some maracas or use a bell as a, as a cue in your classroom. So can you tell us why um, as educators, as art educators in particular, why you find that there's such a strong connection between m music of any kind, percussion in particular, um, and bringing that into our classrooms and connecting that with our students? Well, from the foundation, I would say when it comes to l bridging um, occupational therapy with it, I would say because of the occupation of play. Yeah. Play is a child. And when I, when I talk about uh, occupation, a lot of people think, oh, you know, um, um, they might think, you know, you like, you might help somebody to get a job when they hear that term, you know, right. but when, when I use the term occupation, it, and when we use it within our field, it is any activity that you do that occupies your time, mm -hmm. any, acti mm -hmm. any activity that you do that gives meaning to your life. Now, mm -hmm. when it comes to play, a child's occupation is play. And yeah. that's how, that is how a child learns about the world around them, about their bodies, about themselves, about um, just na na nature, about rhythm and so forth. It is everything is through play. Mm -hmm. you know, so I think that's one of the reasons why it's a strong draw for many kids. It's also um, a very, um, it's a, a community-based thing as well, where right. they are doing it. They're just not playing just by, by themselves, even though you can, but you're playing within the context of a group. So I think that, that idea of play, and we all have an innate sense of rhythm within us. Whether you think you have rhythm or not, we all have rhythm because our heartbeat is based on rhythm. How we talk is based on rhythm. How we mm -hmm. walk, how we walk is based on rhythm how we sleep is based on rhythm. Everything we do in life is actually based around rhythm. The, the, um, the times of the day, the, the seasons of the year, you, you, you know, all of that is based on, on rhythm. I, so. 
I love that connection too, because I think um, I'm also hearing connections between kind of mindfulness and intentional um, listening and learning too. So if you're paying close attention to how someone's talking, how maybe they're telling a story or how their voice gets louder or quieter or the inflection, even just those simple things are just being intentional and mindful about what's happening around you, which is what we do as artists and creatives anyways. So showing our students a way to listen closely for that can be really, really awesome. And um, I love, I love hearing you remind us about play too, because um, yes, I think all of us all play. Right, all students and all people, humans and you know adults alike, love to play without very many boundaries. And knowing that you can do that both in music or maybe it's just like a play day or play parts with the kind of materials that you're using in the art room and seeing if that can be something that can connect to the um, discovery a bit, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, so I know you talked just a little bit about tambo rhythms, but I know you you can give us a bigger um, behind the scenes of what that looks like. So mm -hmm. you obviously work in OT during the day, mm -hmm. but what do you do with tambo rhythms to encourage adults, students, um, anyone to find their creative side as far as music and rhythm goes? Right. So what I do is that um, I provide all the, the percussion. So I always tell Thanks. people, you know, I just need bodies to show up, <laughs> yeah. you know, and I'll take care of everything else. So I basically get groups to, together. There's different types of groups that, that I'll, I'll hold. But like, for instance, um, if it's just a, a group, group of kids, you know, we, um, I'll give them the, the drums. I don't use big drums, I use small, small drums and I use synthetic drums because they're easier to clean off and they're not so, um, um, they're not affected that much by te temperature and humidity and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So with, it, with the drums, we just, um, I'll start a rhythm and then, then I'll, invite, I'll invite people to come on in and play. They do not have to play what I play so it, again, it is not a drum lesson or performance-based class. So people don't have to come thinking, oh, I'm gonna, I need to be a good drummer or I need to have this awesome sense of timing and rhythm. No, what I do, it is about self-expression. It, it is about you just being able to be creative in your own way and to work, work within the con context of a, a, a community. And yeah. try to try to build a a uh, a uh, collective rhythm, and then I always say, let's see where this journey takes us, because every drum circle, every rhythm activity is different. So I never know exactly. I always, you know, I have basic ideas as to what I want to do, but I never know where it's going to go. I I love that, yeah. and I, I think too. Um, you know, again, hearing this connection between art education and music in particular, I mean, there are certainly a lot of ties there too. Mm -hmm. And um, if, if you take nothing else from this chat, just know to maybe take that little extra step to search out and connect with your OT specialist in your school, because you probably have one and maybe you don't have a huge connection with them um, mm -hmm. quite yet. But also thinking about how you can find those similarities or connections to your music educator um, or a few other other teacher teachers that might be passionate about that too because um, like maybe George they do a music circle or a, a drum circle in their in their music class and then can it not become a performance or an interactive piece where we're doing a version of that a collaborative art piece where we're kind of playing at the same time right there's yes. so many interpretations of mm. um, free play and um, creative expression that have very few rules that can be really a great mind break for our students especially mm. now um, and and I love hearing you speak to that a little bit more as well yes um, and your terms too about seeing where the journey takes us is gorgeous it's perfect that, yeah, I and and you 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 said so, something that that's important too is that to incorporate rhythm you don't have to have a physical drum you do not have to have per, percussion, and right. as and as as we talk about this I do have some uh, an an idea to of what you, you can do in a class to incorporate art and yes. rhythm so um, yeah. Yes, we'll, we'll talk about a few kind of like lesson idea connections mm -hmm. in a little bit here too. Yeah. But I did also just want to discuss briefly about even yet another topic because we could talk forever, but um, specifically about your SEL work and kind of your social emotional hints mm -hmm. for us in regards to the OT world and how can right. we bridge that with some of the art education um, connections that we have as art teachers. Because 
we're lucky enough to see all the students in our school. And, and I think um, part of our role is to make sure that we're there for our students in, um, you know, socially, emotionally, mentally, um, in, in all the ways that we can support them. Um, right. So what can you share with us about Rio? Yes. I'm sorry, sound just went off. Can't, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Sorry. Okay. 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 No. So yeah, well, that's one of the things that I really, really like doing when it comes to uh, when I play with kids is the social emotional a aspect of it. I really like and then when I when I think about when we hear that term, because we, we use a, a lot, you know, yes. I think that rhythm is a, a group rhythm making is, is a great way to um, to tar target stress and stress management. Yeah, with our kids and also with ourselves, self control, impulse con control, um, in a sense that they have to follow directions and they have to know when to start and when to stop. Mm -hmm. you, you know, um, teamwork, uh, leadership skills. Um, they can develop some some positive relationship with their peers as well as as they play. They can gain confidence and self esteem, and also it is a good way. Um, Playing slow and fast, playing loud and soft is a good way. Is a good way for self re regulation as well. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I love. Yeah. I love so so much is so much is covered yes. within the context of play. You, you know, and and that's okay if the kids don't see it. They don't have to see it because they're just having a good time and playing. Yeah. But I'm picking up on all the different all the different things that the that the session is addressing with them and they don't even know know it and they're <laughs> and, and, which is cool you know it's like cool. the, it's the best of both worlds they're learning yeah. and experiencing and and growing and practicing but yet they're also having a great time and, and mm -hmm. us as educators can be part of that fun but also can um can help them them grow a bit as well too um so i heard you talk about how this is important for self-regulation but also mm -hmm. Um, you know, as we touch on the fact that, I mean, you've been teaching for 20 years and you've been, you know, with, with your students and doing all these things for a long time. And we've touched on the fact that, like, we know that these, these years have been kind of tricky these last few years. So can you tell mm -hmm. us about some tips or hints about managing our own self-regulation as educators um, and then how we can pass that on to our students so that we don't, you know, we can kind of avoid burnout and feeling like, um, we just can't do it. So what suggestions right. do you have for us to help regulate our own um, social emotional? Um, okay, <laughs> great. So, babe, so there's a few, few things now. Um, there's two, two things. First of all, um, there are two videos that's, that, that, that for free, they're on, on my YouTube channel, Tam Tambor Rhythms. One is playing along to a relaxing, um, to a calming heartbeat sound. Ooh. Okay, so you can play along to that video. And then the other one is also a relaxation video that's for like around 25 minutes long. Ooh. Now, okay. now a story behind that is that um, the, the relaxation video that's 25 minutes long, that is played at approximately, now I think I did rush a little bit in the video, but more or less, it's at 60 beats per minute. Mm -hmm. Now, playing for 60 beats per minute, minute and you can basically play along to a a, a metronome on your phone just down, nice. download an app yep. Six, 60 beats per minute at 20 to 30 minutes will um help to induce alpha brain waves which are the relaxing brain waves that we we get and so if you play along to it or you just lay, lay down and, and you play it and, and you just hear it play you know, you might be surprised on what it may do to you because I actually once sent it to a, a, a friend of mine as we were talking on the phone mm -hmm. and, as she, and she decided to play the video as we were talking and she was falling asleep on the phone <laughs> while she was talking to me. Yeah, so very relaxing. Because she was playing that video, yeah. And <laughs> so she had to turn off the video or, or, or she left. And then I just made one um, two days ago with the heartbeat sound and um, one of the d directors um, that I work with, not, not here, some, somewhere else, she played along to it. And her resting heartbeat is usually in the 90s to like 103. Okay. And with playing that video, which is I think like 10 minutes long, her resting heartbeat went down to 84. Wow. 
So again, <laughs> it's not anything major, drastic that you you can do. You can go. You can have the videos there. And also some something else that I learned, and this is from a, a drummer by the name of uh, Jeff Strong. If you have a book, and I've even, even tried this on my phone as well, but if you get a book of some type or ev even your phone, okay, let me see if I can show you. I I'm going to do, do it up here, but you don't have to hold it up here. You, you can yeah. actually hold it down, okay? If you play what's called a paradiddle, okay, which is going to be, if you look at my hands, it is um, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, okay? If you do that when you're stressed out, that's a form of mi mindfulness because it'll put you in the present moment and it will help you to relax and de-stress because you are so focused on trying to do the right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. And you just stay there and when you feel stressed out and focused, do, do that. And that can also help to bring you down and also use it as a tool to, re to regulate if you're an anxious. That can help you to do it as well. I, I absolutely love that tip too. I mean, I know kids, even today, I had a kid kind of like pound the table. He was feeling a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. And I said, all right, friend, we can try like pressing hands together and let your tension and your muscles go. But I love like finger motions too. And yeah. I think that's a great tip. Yeah, there is a, I also on my, on my website, tamborhythms.com, there's a page the tab that I have is called OT Tips. There, okay. is, a free, there is a free PDF do download that's there that t t teaches you how to do, it's made, um, the OT who, who um, originally did it, she did it with students that are in pre-K, but I think it works for any one of all ages, where she's doing the palm, mm. palm press, she's doing the f finger pull, Yep. You know, the bo body hugs, you know, all of that can help when it comes to calming, relaxing, and to help with fo focus, not Absolutely. just for your kids, but also for you as well. Oh, completely. Yes. And that is a great hint, too. And so many of the things that we're modeling for our students are helpful for us as well. And mm -hmm. I always try to remind myself and my students that we don't have to have a reason to do something like that. Like, it just feels good to hug yourself anyways, or to like take a deep breath. It doesn't have to be a chaotic moment in order to incite that. We can just do it to do it because it feels good and it's going to relax you even more so than you might be. Um, okay, love that. So we'll check that out. And of course, after our chat today, I'm going to link to some of the resources that George mentioned. So um, the, the heartbeat uh, relaxation video, I'll link to his website and some other things if you're looking for a way to connect um, more OT and um, percussion and some other things within your classroom as well. So I have a couple more questions for you, George. And like I said, anyone, if you have a question, feel free to drop it into the chat and we'll um, uh, George will answer it the best he can. But I also wanted you to just share with us, again, as art educators, um, a, a lot of times we notice and see all of the things that an, an OT educator would also see. But what kind of tips or things do you feel like you kind of want an art educator to know about that would mm -hmm. be helpful for us to keep our eyes on, especially on our youngest artists? Yes. Okay. Um, that's, I'm so glad you asked that. So <laughs> one, of, one of the things that I, I think, um, one of the things that I've been tra trained in and that I'm seeing and that I really think would help is that um, and b before ki kinder, I would not introduce pencils before oh, kinder, okay. okay? I would use chalk and crayon. Mm -hmm. And I would use half-inch pieces of chalk and crayon. And that's a technique that I've learned from um, a pro program called Handwriting Without Tears, okay? Um, so basically, um, I, you want to use a... You, I wish I had it. But anyway, if you use a standard size pencil, let's just say yeah. pencil, okay? Then when the child, um, they have an easier time developing like a funky grasp pattern. They sure. start doing this, they start doing this, you mm -hmm. know, and, you know, and all these different word things. But if you get a half inch piece of crayon or chalk, they yeah. can't do this. They have to use a tripod grasp. So yeah. you're helping to establish a more functional grasp pattern with them. Now, the reason why I say use crayon and chalk is because those are more resistive than pencil lead. Mm -hmm. Pencil lead is not that resistive. And you really want the young ones in pre-K really to develop their strength 
and their fingers, as well as to anything that is resistive also gives se sensory feedback to the mm. fingers, to the hands. So you are wanting to develop that in their hands at a younger age. And once, once they hit ki kinder and first, then I would give them golf pencils. Oh, okay. Point. Yeah, use Ooh. golf pen pencils. Smaller pencils would be better. Yes, golf pencils in kinder and first, and then you can bring the regular size pencil second grade and up. Sure, yes, I love yes, that. And I think, yes. I think obviously, you know, we only have control, or I shouldn't say that, but a lot of times we have control over what happens in our classroom and we can yes. collaborate with other educators. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's true is to, to recognize where do our students need just a little bit more help or control? And a lot of times, you know, the first thing we do on our papers in my, with my students is write our name on the back. And sometimes it does become really frustrating for those youngest artists when they're grabbing a pencil or they need to erase and it's not working. And so um, maybe it's just a, a quick little switch of a, an initial reaction. And mm -hmm. we're always writing names with dark colored crayons and that's just how it works, right? Yeah. So, um, I love I love that hint too. Do you have anything else for us, George? Yes, and something else to to do is that you might want to consider um, having them draw or do the artwork, um, if space does allow. Also on their stomach on the floor, okay, Ooh. but but propped up on their elbows because what you're doing is that number one with the deep pressure that you are giving them while they're on the floor, that's that can help them with calming and to be able to focus as well. Yeah. And, and by them being propped up on their elbows while on their stomach, um, of course, you do not let them rest their, their head on the floor. Their head needs to sure. stay up. You're, you're developing the trunk and the shoulder. And you need a strong and stable trunk and shoulder in order to have good fine motor skills. I love that. Yeah, you have to have a, st a stable base of support. Okay. Yeah. Um, when they're seated in, in, in a chair, and I know this is one of the things that for so many years, it's, I know it's very difficult. But when they're seated in a chair, really both feet should be planted on the ground and not da dangling. Because right. um, if their feet, or for the young ones, if their feet da dangle, they, that can have an impact on how they use their hands. Wow. Because yeah. you, you have to have a stable base of support throughout your body, throughout your core, throughout your, your trunk and your legs in order to be able to have that, that um, mo mobility in your hands. One of the things that some, some of us therapists like to use and say is that we need to have stability before we have mobility. Mm. I love that. Before, how do you feel about um, standing while- That's perfect. Are... That's okay. perfect. And I would say, and I'm so glad you brought that up too, because one of the- <laughs> One of the things that I would say, I mean, I know we live in a day and age now where, um, and I think I know why they did it, but I think that um, dry erase boards are, are hurting us more than helping us. Mm. And the reason why I say that when it comes to kids is because dry erase boards are not resistive and you mm -hmm. barely have to use any, pr any pr pressure on the board with right. a, a marker. Whereas if you have chalk, you have to use a certain amount of a uh, uh, pressure and you get again that resistive se sensory feedback to your joints of your f fingers but yes. i would say though even with the dry erase or even on the wall of course you would have sheets of pa paper on the wall is that i would have them do do activities that are at or above eye level and the reason why you're doing that is because you're again you're developing the shoulder you're, mm. you're, you're, you're strengthening and you're helping the shoulder to get more stable because the more that you have here, then the better you, you'll use your hands. So yes, oh, no. I would do things that are at eye level or above. Perfect. Thank you. And I know it's like, we know all of it's connected, right? Mm -hmm. My shoulders are going to be important for me, how I make my art, but it just doesn't always, we don't always remember that. Right? Yeah. yeah. Just point that out to our students too. Right. Taking a fine, fine motor, Control is really the end result. We have to look yeah. at other, other parts of the body to make sure that they are in the correct alignment and development before we can expect these to work. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's just like it's the finishing touch. It's the finesse, right? Is that, yeah. last, that last little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, perfect. Thank you, my friend. So um, you did give us a lot of good tips about like that paradiddle and trying to keep calm with some finger motions. Um, a lot of things too, specifically about 
how to work, you know, our bodies and to recognize what our students need. And then also just to regulate ourselves as well. Um, but before we move on to um, kind of just wrapping up our chat today, I wanted to mm -hmm. give everyone a little reminder that at the end here, we're going to do a quick trivia question to try to get your hands on one of these really cool stickers. Um, so if you want to participate, I'll ask a question about our chat today. And then if you are the winner of the sticker, I will send that to you. Um, but I wanted to end with um, two questions. So the first one, George, was um, what it, words of encouragement, advice do you have for us as educators, as people, as humans um, moving forward to kind of end on a positive note? Mm -hmm. And then after we're done with that, I would love for you to share a message for our kids um, okay. because our kids need to hear uh, how they can be the best version of themselves. And it's always fun to hear from a different voice as well. Yes. Uh, one of the things that kind of like my, my fo focusing theme when I do my events is um, what do you need to do in your life in order to live in rhythm? Mm. What habits do you need to incorporate? And of course, I'm not talking about music at all. If music is one of them, then awesome. I'm just talking about habits. What do you need to do? What kind of changes do you need to make? Um, maybe, maybe there are some things you need to add in your life. Maybe there are some things you need to take away in order for you to be able to live in rhythm, in order for you to be, able, to be able to live your life in like the right groove that's for you. Yeah. You know? Um, so yes, and of course, as I'm saying this, I'm always, I always preach to myself as well because I need to always bring this back to me, you know? Um, yeah. And I, I think that one of the biggest um, encouragements that I have for kids is really... Um, um, put, put the phone down and go out and play. <laughs> just go outside, forget the Xbox, put the Xbox, just go outside and play and climb and explore the world and, and just see what's out there. Because, I mean, when I was young, younger, that's all we had. We, mm -hmm. we never had all these guys. We just play, you will be, be it spend time in the sun, spend time with, na with na nature and just enjoy what's out there in the world. Because play is so good for both our mind and for our bo body. And you, you would be amazed on how good you'll feel. Thank you, George. I appreciate that. And I hope that some of our students or our kids can take that to heart a little bit. And mm -hmm. people, you know, us adults too, right? Because <laughs> it's like... Yes, play, <laughs> even though we're talk talking about kids, play is an occupation, not just for kids, it is an occupation for adults. Absolutely. Well. Yes. And yes. I love to phrasing it as an occupation because then it kind of feels like, well, I have to do it. It's my job. I better, it is. you know. It is right? an occupation. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is. It's, it's what we do um, each and every day. And so why not make it something that can be fun and meaningful? I appreciate that for sure. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So like I said, after our chat today, I'm going to be linking to um, George's website as well as his YouTube. So you can follow along with a few more of the things we mentioned here today. And again, um, feel free to message him and for sure follow him on his Instagram so you can see some more about um, the amazing drumming that he's doing as well as a lot of awesome OT tips that can directly connect to your art education classroom um, and just how you interact with students day to day. He's got a lot of great tips on there. So we're going to end with our trivia question here. Um, so if you're watching the chat, all you have to do is drop into the drop into the chat with your fast fingers here, the answer to the question. And if you're the first one, then you can message the Art of Ed. Um, just DM your address and I will um, send you a sticker. So the question for today is, what kind of instrument does George typically use with his students? And we're going to keep it broad here today. Ooh, that look at that rainbow. What kind of instrument does George typically use with his students? I feel like you have lots of them around you, George. Did you bring any today? But one. Okay. I mean, they'll get it because this is, you know, there's like a five second leg. Y'all, answer in the chat for me, my friends. <laughs> Start yelling at them. <laughs> what kind of instruments does George use with his students? Put it in the chat for me and I will send you a sticker. Thank you. <laughs> my first, oh, there we go. Now we're getting them. Um, my first response is wrenchware. Wrenchware, you are the winner of a cool sticker. So go ahead and message the art event. Just send us your address and I will pop this into the mail for you. So George, is there anything else you want to share with us about where we can follow you or um, follow along so that we can be the best art educators for our students um, as possible. Yeah, so besides, if you do fa Facebook, you can look up on um, the group Occupational Therapy Tips. 
you can find that that group and join it. Um, you can also join the group Tam Tambo Rhythms on Facebook as well as follow me at Tambo Rhythms on Instagram as well. Perfect. Perfect. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then I, uh, yes, please. No, no, no. And then I can finish out with this little with a little drum rhythm if you want. Yes, please. I would ready. love to hear it. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Thank you for the reminder. Um, so I'll be linking to George's OT Tips and Beyond account as well as his Tambo Rhythms one in case you're interested in the more musical side or um, OT as well because it all can can be easily and and um, in a fun way integrated into our classroom. So before we go, would you like to share a little music with us? Sure. Yeah. And real, real quick, I think we we talked talked about this bit before. If if there's any anybody that, that's interested in knowing how to incorporate it, um, please feel feel free and I can g give you tips. There's actually a free 15 minute video as well on my U YouTube when it comes to social emotional um, skills and drumming that the kids can play along to as well. So Perfect, yeah. perfect. Okay. I'm excited to take a peek at okay. that. And just to okay. clarify for all the guests in the chat here, I'll be sharing um, a lot of George's links in the Art of Ed story after our chat. And this chat is saved to IGTV. So you're welcome to rewatch it again um, as many times as you'd like. Awesome. All right, we're ready. So, all right. So this is a frame, a frame drum. Okay. And so I have a mallet here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, um, you know what, I'm going to start playing. And then just for a few mi minutes, I want you to jo join on in and you can play on a book. You can play on your tape on your ta table. You can play on your body. You can have two sticks. You can clap. You can do wh whatever you want to do. Okay. Now you c come on in when, when you're ready. Okay. I'll, I'll start the rhythm and you come on in when, when you're ready. Okay. So whenever you feel it, you just play along. Okay. Okay. To the groove go back to the groove everybody move everybody come on and jam come on now come on jam jam come on now come on use your hands come on groove come on everybody groove come on now come on move 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 come on now everybody play everybody have some fun today come on play play everybody play come on now come on play 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 come on now come on have some fun have some fun while i drop come on come on now back to the groove come on now come on move move that with a whole bunch of kindergartners and they all st my favorite part is them stopping at the same time pre-k and kinder oh. stopping at the same time when, when i go four oh, three man. two one stop and they all stop i love it that's my favorite time oh that just made my day george thank you so much i'm playing like giant markers as clavets that's here. okay that it works you can use so whatever you want to instruments everyone you don't, i was you don't worried need that our timing would be off but i feel like maybe it was pretty okay like yeah. tech wise right yeah and one of the things too when it comes to an activity that you could do in the in the classroom is you can give them two pieces of chalk give them like two mm. different like like maybe a red one and an orange one okay and or or crayons okay and mm. then and then you as the teacher, you could be playing a rhythm on your table. Yeah. And what they have to do is that they, they can take the half inch piece of crayon or chalk, and then they can make whatever they want to as their, as to your rhythm. Ooh. And then that way they are just using their imagination to play along to whatever you're playing. I love it. So. Yeah. I love it. So many connections. Thank you so, so much for making our day filled with music and energy and tips and, and positivity, George. We really appreciate it. So I will be sharing this IGTV as well as a bunch more in our story. And y'all, free concert. I mean, you can't go wrong, right? <laughs> thank, thank you so you much so for much. having me. Of course. Thank you so, so much for joining us. And have a great okay. night, Monday. Or have a All great right. Monday night. Mon <laughs> awesome. All right. Have bye, a good George. One.
Have a good one. Bye, everyone. Thank you for having me. Take care.